Last week, I do want to go over some things that we were talking about last week, just so you'll know, uh, uh, be reminded, keep it fresh in your memory. And the reason I want to keep this before you, you know, Peter says that uh, he came to stir up their remembrance, and Paul told Timothy to stir up their remembrance, bring them into remembrance. We want you to be mindful of this statement and this discussion. Because, friends, one thing that we want you to know is, when we start having a discussion, we want to finish it. We want to make sure that everything is answered, all the questions are answered, and everybody has the opportunity to, uh, uh, to get their feel of this discussion. And Mr. Marty Roberts, who's come, who came on with us back in November, November 30th, uh, had made this statement, I am willing to come back again and debate you, but it will be on the name of Jesus. Now, that's what Marty Roberts said, and uh, th we are waiting and, uh, to hear from him. I've sent him a couple of emails here recently, and I haven't heard from him in over a week. So uh, if some of you know him, you might want to say, you know, we hope that you uh, are willing to come back because quite a few people are saying we like this kind of discussion. We like for people to get up and be able to uh, make a statement about what they believe and then try to set forth and prove it from the Bible. And friends, that is very, very productive. The Bible is full of countless uh, uh, examples of individuals setting forth and reasoning together and disputing and having great discussions over what the, the will of God is and coming to a an understanding, coming to unity. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that Marty says he proved is that we, we are discussing in the name of Jesus. And Marty says that he proved that in the name of Jesus, particularly baptism in the name of Jesus, means that you say the name, you actually say Jesus uh, at some way, shape, or form when you are baptizing someone. And Marty says he proved that. We want to go back through that one more time just to uh, uh, remind you of what he says. I guess you could say we're gullible enough to believe that we're going to obey what the Scriptures say and do it in the name of Jesus. Uh, James has an argument against that. says there's got to be a burden of proof is on us to prove it which I showed you before, that they did say the name of Jesus. And he agreed with it, but I don't know why he continually wants me to show a burden of proof. But when I showed it, they did uh, say the name we of Jesus. We know that they did. We know the apostles said in the name of Jesus. So I'm, my, con my uh, contention is that they say in the name of Jesus every time they baptized, and they thought it was important. Now, friends, I, he, he's right. I didn't deny that baptism is in the name of Jesus. But I do deny that he has proven that they said the words in the name of Jesus every time they baptized. And my contention, friends, is not that baptism is not in the name of Jesus, but it is that it requires a certain statement to be made in order for it to be done. Now, now watch this. On one hand, he says he proved it. But now he writes back later, he says, I have some more proofs that they baptized in the name of Jesus, but still no scriptures per se but proof enough for any God-fearing soul. Well, I'm, I'm assuming he's saying that I'm not God-fearing because I don't accept his proofs that he admits is not scriptures. So, friends, you know, this is what we're talking about. We get to see this. We get to find out what the apostolics, what the United Pentecostals, what uh, individuals like uh, 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 Geno Jennings and what individuals like uh, uh, the United Pentecostals in this area, what they believe, we get to see what they believe because we're actually getting a man to come up and defend what they believe. And so it's very beneficial, very good. But friends, I want you to notice this. This is what I'm saying, and I want to keep this before your mind. I'm saying that scriptural baptism is in the name of Jesus. I don't deny that. But it does not require having to have something said over it. In the name of Jesus is simply a reference to the authority by which a thing is done. It's done in the name of Jesus or by his authority. Now, friends, no one is going to respond to the gospel that is preached as uh, elevating Christ as Lord and Savior, preaching that he is the Son of God, and then turn around and say, I'm going to be baptized, but I'm not going to be uh, uh, use Christ's authority to do it. Friends, when someone responds to the gospel, they're responding to the fact that they are submitting to Christ. Thus, everything they do in response to the gospel is in the name of Christ or by his authority. Marty still hasn't proven that you have to say something. And so my contention is that scriptural baptism may or may not be administered using the name of Jesus or saying the name of Jesus. It may be you saying the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or it may be you administered saying nothing. 
The statement is simply this, that we are di disputing whether the name has to be called out. And I'm going to show that just for, uh, 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 for the sake of our discussion tonight. Now, I want you to notice this. This is one of the things that we, I think this is about where we froze up last week. But I want you to notice this. In Colossians 3.17, which is a scripture that must be discussed and must be examined, friends, it must come to, we must come to understanding about what this verse means. Marty says that it means you have to say in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to listen again to what he says. And his statement is that whenever he speaks by the authority of Christ, he says in the name of Jesus. Listen carefully. And Paul said, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Word is what you say, isn't it? Well, it, it is. But do I, does that mean I have to say in the name of Jesus? Yes. No, it doesn't. So you, you can't prove that either. Now, is every, you're telling me I've got to prove everything. Right? Is you everything you say, everything you say, you say in the name of Jesus after you say it or before you say it? Everything I say? Yeah. When I do it in his authority, when I go to do something for him. Well, you, no, but you, you have to say it? You have, I do it when I do anything that's according to the scripture. Right, when, I, when, you, when I ask you my question, to the Bible. now it's my turn to ask a question, but when, when I ask you this question and you give your answer, I want you to, every answer I, you give me, you say in the name of Jesus because that's what you believe in, word or deed. Whenever I do something, yeah, I've got to do it you in have the name to say of Jesus. It. You have to say it in the name of Jesus because that's, that's, your, that's your doctrine. You have to say it. But you haven't been saying it. Well, the Bible says to do it in the baptism in the name of Jesus. I can, do, I can baptize in the name of Jesus without saying it. You still haven't proven that in the name of Jesus means you say it. My friend, that's what we're saying. He's saying every time he does something by the authority of Christ, he says it. Again, listen clear. Just the first little thing. Paul said, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Word or is it what you say, isn't it? Well, it, it is. But do right. I, does that mean I have to say in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Does that mean I have to say in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Does that mean I have to say in the name of Jesus? Yeah. All right, he says that means you have to say in the name of Jesus. But friends, notice, Marty didn't do that. Marty says that if he is speaking by the authority of Christ, when he speaks by the authority of Christ, he does this. He says, when I speak by the authority of Christ, but I everything you say, everything you say, you say in the name of Jesus after you say it or before you say it? Everything I say? Yeah. When I do it in his authority, when I go to do something for him. Well, you, no, but you, you have to say it? You, you I do it when I do anything that's according to the scriptures. When I, when you, when I ask you my question. According to the Bible. Now, all right, when I do it according to his authority, I say in the name of Jesus. Friends, I want you to think about this again. Listen to what Marty said. Listen to what. In his first speech, second speech, and third speech. I asked Marty Robinson, Truth Calvary Apostolic Church in Maynard, North Carolina. My appeal tonight is not new evidence or thought or theory. That was his first speech. Hello, this is Marty Robinson coming back. Uh, James uh, was speaking about got to prove where they said the name of Jesus. That was a second speech. James was talking about earlier what he doesn't want his salvation depending on what somebody says. Now, friends, the, in the first three speeches, he said in this statement, in the question and answers, he said, if I am speaking by the authority of Christ, I'm going to say in the name of Jesus. Just like if he baptizes someone by the authority of Christ, he's going to say, in the name of Jesus Christ. But friends, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do the very thing that he says you must do. Now, friends, this is what we're, we're trying to impress upon you. This is the, the inconsistency. Marty says it means say it when he speaks. In other words, he says if you're going to preach or teach or speak uh, by Christ's authority, you have to say in the name of Jesus. Friends, he did not say it before he got up to speak, or as he got up to speak, he didn't say it when he finished. Twice, if you go back and listen to that, twice he told you who he was, Marty Roberts, Marty Roberts. But friends, he didn't tell you that he was speaking by the, in the authority of Christ. See, he says it means say it when he, when he speaks, but he does not say it. He just does not say it. But he, everything you say, everything you say, you say in the name of Jesus after you say it or before you say it? Everything I say? Yeah. When I do it in his authority, when I go to do something for him. Well, you, no, but you, you have to say it? You, you I do it when I do anything that's according to the scriptures. When I, when you, when I ask you my question. to the Bible. Now, now, all right, when I'm doing it by his authority, there he's saying it again. Listen carefully. Well, when I ask you this question and you give your answer, I want you to, every answer I, you give me, you say in the name of Jesus because that's what you believe in, word or deed. 
Whenever I do something, yeah, I got to do it you in have the name to say of Jesus. It. You have to say it in the name of Jesus. Because that's your, that's your, that's your doctrine. You have to say it. But you haven't been saying it. Well, the Bible says to do it in the baptism in the name of Jesus. Well, the Bible says to do it in the baptism in the name of Jesus. Well, the Bible says to do it in the baptism in the name of Jesus. I can, do, I can baptize in the name of Jesus without saying it. You still haven't proven that in the name of Jesus means you say it. Now, friends, can, do, you hear, do you hear this? He says, Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever you do in word or deed... Do all in the name of Jesus. That means whatever you do in word, you have to say in the name of Jesus. Well, friends, when it comes to baptism, he insists that in the name of Jesus, that phrase must be spoken at baptism. But the same phrase in Acts 2.38 that he says proves you must say it in baptism is, uh, is found in Colossians 3.17. And he ought to have the same insistence on every time he speaks, but he doesn't do it. See? It's all about baptism. It's all about saying, making sure you say the right thing at baptism, but he doesn't apply the same uh, uh, emphasis on speaking. But yet it's the same phrase. It must mean, friends, that he really doesn't believe, that he really doesn't believe that you have to say something about in the name of Jesus in order for it to be done by his authority. Now, Marty says it means say it when he speaks. All right, but he does not say it. Now, friends, that tells me one thing. Marty must not have been authorized by Jesus to be, have been here on November 30th. He must not have been authorized by Jesus to be here on November 30th. Otherwise, he would have told us, he would have told us that he was here by Christ's authority. He said the reason why he says it is because he wants everybody to know that he is doing it by Christ's authority, but yet he didn't say it one time when he was given an answer. He didn't say it one time when he was given a speech. He didn't say, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord to, to uh, defend this doctrine. He didn't say, I'm answering these, these arguments in the name of the Lord. He didn't say he was doing it in the name of the Lord. Therefore, friends, I'm just going to have to, to uh, uh, take it, take him at his word that he must not have been authorized to be here. He actually came up here. He actually wrote an email challenging us to have this debate when he wasn't even authorized to do it. Now, friends, can you imagine someone usurping that authority? Claiming that he's going to defend the, the word of the Lord when he didn't even tell us that he was authorized to do it? Friends, I know this. If, if you are out in the business world and you seek out to do something that you're not authorized to do, you'll get in trouble. You know, I'll tell you what, next time you're at the bank, you just go on around behind the counter and tell the teller there, you know what, I'm going to start counting the money because I can do it better than you can. You're not authorized to be back there. So you don't have the authority to be back there. So, you know, just, just go do it. Marty, Marty would say, you know what, I, I don't have to tell you that I'm doing it by authority. Or he didn't do it, but yet he insists that you must say it. Friends, we're talking about some inconsistency here. See, Marty must not have been authorized because, after all, he didn't say that he was authorized. He didn't say he was authorized. Now, friends, I want, to, I want you to listen carefully to what Marty has been saying and listen to what the Bible is going to tell us. If you have to, if you must, say in the name of Jesus in order for it to be uh, authoritative, then Marty ha does not have the authority to be here. But friends, I want to demonstrate to you how crazy and how silly and how ludicrous this doctrine really is of, of stressing that you must say the name in order for it to be authoritative. Friends, when we, when we talk about our law, oftentimes we, we have the statement, uh, in the name of the law. The police may do something in the name of the law. Now, in part of our discussion and the, and the discussion that's coming up uh, the next time Marty comes, he says the next time he's coming, we're going to discuss the name of Jesus. So I want to go ahead and put this out for your consideration. Marty says that if it's done in the name of Jesus, you have to say Jesus because that is his name. And he's going to tell you that the name of God is Jesus and the name of the Holy Spirit is Jesus and the name of Jesus is Jesus. And that's another discussion that we, Lord willing, are going to have. But I want to show you how ridiculous it is to say 
uh, that you have to say the name in order for it to be authoritative. Here we have two police officers with a battering ram. And they're going to knock down this door. We're going to say this is Marty's house. And they're going to knock down the, the, uh, the door and serve a warrant. Now, they may say, open up in the name of the law. Now, friends, that is simply telling Marty and whoever else is listening that they have the authority to do it. But, friends, you know what? There is something else that we need to consider. These individuals, if they're going to serve this warrant, they don't necessarily have to say the police. They don't necessarily have to address themselves or who they are. They can open that door and then tell you who they are. See, they can go ahead and do something and still have the authority even though they did not say in the name of the law. Even though they did not say they're doing it in the name of the law. They can go through that door they go through that door and they can serve that warrant and not have to say in the name of the law. They're still authorized to go through there. If they have the warrant and the judge has signed off on it, they can go through that door. Now, sometimes they'll say open up in the name of the law or open up police, but they don't have to. Now, friends, this is what Marty would say. If these individuals came up to Marty's house, and let's say they did say open up in the name of the law, well, the next thing Marty's going to say is, well, it's not authorized until you tell me the name. Tell me the name of the law, see? Marty says, well, you have to now say the law's name or it's not authorized. You can't just say you're doing it by the authority you actually have to say a specific name in order for it to be authorized. Now, friends, if the police came and said, open up in the name of the law, what name would they give? Pray tell what name would they give Marty to tell him we have the authority to do this. What name would they give? Would they give the judge's name? Would they give the name of the state constitution? Would they give the name of the sheriff? You know, what name would they give? And what name would they have to give? Or could they simply go through that door and serve that warrant without stating verbally that they had the authority? If they have the paper in their hands, if they have the warrant to serve, friends, that is their authority. It does not depend upon what they say. Now, friends, this is, this is how ridiculous it really is. So let's look at this. I want to show you this about in the name. Is it really saying the name that gives the authority? Now, friends, one thing that, that you're going to hear us say uh, when you're studying the Bible is this. Always make sure that the conclusion you come to does not contradict Scripture somewhere else. Because if it conflicts Scripture somewhere else, then... You, you don't have harmony. You don't have the, 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 the truth of God's word. The psalmist says the sum of thy word is truth, and we have to take the whole counsel of God. And if it is, if it is, is broken, if the harmony of Scripture is broken, then you don't have the, the true answer. Jesus said in John 10, verse 34 and 35, he said the Scripture cannot be broken. So when you come to a conclusion about what is right or what the Bible is teaching, you have to make sure that it doesn't conflict somewhere else, that it's not having some uh, scriptural uh, uh, conflict with another verse. Now, Marty's doctrine is, in the name means you say the phrase, in the name of Jesus. Now, look at John 3 and verse 18. Jesus said, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but, uh, uh, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now Marty's going to say, well, what's his name? All right, Marty, his name's Jesus. But now, tell me this. Is this man condemned? For what reason? Is it because he hasn't believed in pronouncing the word Jesus? 
Is that really, is that really what condemns a person? Is a person condemned because he has not believed in pronouncing the word Jesus? Is that what the verse is saying? See? Marty says when you see in the name of Jesus, it means you have to say it. But here, Jesus actually says a man is condemned because he hath believed not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So does that mean this man's condemned because he didn't say Jesus? Or could it be that he's condemned because he has not believed in the dominion and the authority and the almighty power of the Son of God? Could that be it? You see, our contention is this. In the name of Jesus makes reference to his authority. If something is done in his name, it's done by his authority. It's done by his permission. It's done because he has ordered it or it's perpetuating his cause. That's what in the name is done, how something is done in his name. It does not require saying the name. Now, why was this man condemned? See, Marty would have to say, he would have to say that he is condemned because he doesn't believe in pronouncing Jesus. Because there's that phrase, in the name of, Je in the name of Jesus, or in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See how, how crazy it is? See, Marty's interpretation would be this. Marty's interpreta interpretation would be, he that believeth, is, uh, believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed by pronouncing the designation or the title of the only begotten Son of God. Friends, that's not what Jesus is talking about. If someone does not believe that he is the Christ, that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords, if someone does not believe or accept the fact that he is the Son of God and has been given all authority in heaven and earth, then he's going to be condemned. It's not because this man doesn't believe in pronouncing the word. Let's look at this one in Acts 3 and verse 6. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. This is one that Marty used to prove, if you will, to prove that you had to say something. He said this is proof that the apostles said in the name of Jesus every time they did something. No, it just proves that Peter said in the name of Jesus when he healed someone. But when he said in the name of Jesus, friends, what was Peter saying? Notice the lame man in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, and you want, if you want to go back and look at the context here, is the lame man, he has been uh, uh, lame from his mother's womb. He's above 40 years old at this time. And he sees Peter and John about to go into the temple, asking alms from them. Verse 4, Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, did Peter, did Peter, uh, was Peter saying that pronouncing the name Jesus is what saved him? Or was it by the power of Jesus that this man was healed? Now, Marty's going to stop and say, well, it was actually saying the name. He was actually saying that, friends, we have shown countless times where the name Jesus was not even spoken, but yet people were healed. When Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, was that what healed the man, simply stating the word, simply crying out the name Jesus? Or was Peter saying, I'm doing this by the power, I'm doing this by the power of, of Jesus Christ? See, here's Marty's interpretation. Marty would say, such as I have give I thee by pronouncing it, the designation or the title of Jesus rise up and walk. Simply by stating this, I'm, I am uh, bestowing you the ability to rise up and walk. Friends, if you go back and look, continue to look in Acts 4, Peter tells, the, tells us, here's the divine commentary on what this what has happened in this verse. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 7, they set them in the midst and asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? By what authority have you done this very thing? 
And Peter says in verse 10, By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom the God raised from the dead, even by him, not by his name, but even by him, by the person, this man is made whole. See, friends, it's not simply pronouncing the name, but Marty wants, to, wants us to believe that it's simply saying the name. Friends, it's, it's not the case. It's just not the case. Here's another one in Acts 4, verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, friends, let's just get right down to the absurd. Let's just make this as ridiculous as we can in order to demonstrate the absurdity of this doctrine, the fallacy of this doctrine. Sometimes that's what you have to do is to illustrate the absurd with the absurd. Marty wants to say that in the name is saying it. But is it really? Look at this. They commanded them, the apostles, at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, what did they uh, prohibit them from doing? What were they commanding them not to do? Were they saying, don't say Jesus? They commanded them not to speak or teach Jesus by saying Jesus. Or were they saying, you don't teach that which Jesus has told you to teach. You don't teach those things which you have received from God. You don't teach those things that, that uh, you claim to have been uh, told to teach. But again, look at the divine commentary. They're prohibited from teaching in the name of Jesus. Marty would say that means they're prohibited from saying his name. But this is what Peter says. In Acts 4 and verse 20, two verses later, we cannot speak the things which we have seen and heard. You don't, you don't cry out the name of Jesus. Peter says, look, I'm going to speak the things I've seen and heard. I suggest to you, friends, that Peter saw and heard more than just the name Jesus. Don't you? Don't you think that Peter saw and heard more than just the name of Jesus? Don't you think he saw and heard Jesus' teaching and Jesus' preaching and Jesus' mighty deeds that he did and the resurrected Christ and his ascension back into heaven? That's what he was told to be a witness of in, first, in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That's what he was told to be a witness of, the things that he had seen and heard. But yet they were forbidden not to speak or teach nor teach in the name of Jesus. Friends, it's not saying the word Jesus that is in reference here, but rather it's the doctrine that they have been taught. It's the, it's the doctrine that they have been taught. In Acts 5, verse 40, Acts 5, verse 40, let's look at this. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now, friends, what were they prohibited from doing? What were they threatened not to do again? Were they, were they told, I'm commanding you that you should not say Jesus? Or were they being threatened not to teach? Were they being threatened not to, not to uh, teach the things that they've seen and heard? What was it that they were being commanded not to do. See, Marty says in the name of Jesus means hey, that's, that's saying his name. But friends, no, 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 no. It's talking about, it's a reference to the things which Jesus had told them to teach. Marty would say, yeah, but that, and if Marty agreed to this, then he's going to have to agree that Matthew 28, 19 and 20, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was one of the things that they were teaching. But he doesn't want that. So he has to say, no, that's just, that's the name of Jesus. I, verbally speaking, the name of Jesus. You see, friends, when you draw out these, these doctrines to their logical or illogical conclusion, as it may be, you, you see how really absurd they are, friends. And I don't, I don't, I don't say that with a, with a dig. I'm not trying to rile you up, but friends, I do want you to see that when you hold to a doctrine that is so inconsistent with the Bible 
and so convoluted that it doesn't make sense when you're reading a when you're reading a verse, friends. You need to give that doctrine up. And we're going to show later on that this doctrine, friends, is actually what is helping to um, uh, perpetuate a, the, a greater doctrine, a greater uh, erroneous doctrine of one in the Godhead. That's what Marty's wanting to get to, the name of Jesus. He's wanting us to discuss the Godhead. That's fine. I am glad for that discussion. I'm glad for that to come to, to my feet. I'm glad for that to come to, the, to, the, uh, to this venue where we can discuss one in the Godhead. But first, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Does in the name of Jesus mean saying the name? Marty says it's what it means when you're talking about baptism. Well, Marty, if that's what it means when we're talking about baptism, then how about this? How about saying this is what it means when we're talking about don't preach? This is what it means when they were commanded not to preach. See? See, friends, they weren't being told don't say the name of Jesus. They're being told don't preach what Jesus has told you to preach. Don't preach that Jesus has been given authority. Don't preach the doctrines that he has given to you. In Acts 4 and verse 13, the Bible says they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus based upon what they spoke. And it wasn't just by saying his name. See? Friends, you people can say the name of Jesus and that doesn't mean that they've been with him. See? That just means they don't know a name. But when they're speaking certain things that sets them apart, then they, they can be identified as being followers of Christ. So don't speak the name of Jesus. It's not saying don't say his name. It's, being, it's saying the doctrines that he sets forth. Don't perpetuate his cause. Don't further his cause. Don't act by his commands. Don't yield yourself to his authority. And certainly don't tell people to follow him. Let's look at one more. In Acts 9 verse 29, speaking of Saul, Saul has been converted on the road to Damascus, and now he comes to he comes to uh, Jerusalem. He was with them going in, uh, coming coming in and going out of Jerusalem, verse twenty nine. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Now let's stop for a minute. Let's put let's put Marty's doctrine up here one more time. It's not just Marty's doctrine. It's all this, this uh, Jesus-only doctrine. Let's put that up here one more time. Friends, what was it that Paul, Saul of Tarsus, Paul, is doing when he bold, spake boldly in the name of Jesus? Was he simply pronouncing the name of Jesus really loud? Was he simply saying, the name of Jesus is Jesus? Or was he teaching doctrines? Was he teaching the gospel that he received from Jesus? Now, friends, again, let's go to the Bible. Let's just let the Bible be its own best commentary. In Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1 and verse, uh, <clears throat> we'll start about in verse 11. Let's just find out what from Paul what Paul was, was, was preaching. Let's just find out if Paul was boldly declaring that Jesus was the name of Jesus. Let's see if Paul was boldly declaring by simply going out and going Jesus and saying it at the top of his lungs. Let's just see what he was boldly declaring. Paul says in Galatians 1 and verse 11 and following, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, uh, uh, taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in, in past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my father but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me to his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him uh, among the heathen immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood neither went I to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus unto Damascus then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days friends what Paul did was he started 
preaching. He started preaching the gospel that was committed to him. He didn't just go around and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That was not what he was boldly declaring. That was not what he was speaking boldly. He was speaking the gospel that was committed to him. See, friends, in the name of Jesus does not mean you're saying in the name of Jesus. It just does not mean that. Yet Marty would have us believe that. And he'd have us believe that that's what they had to say when they were baptized. Guys, if you want to put up the phone numbers, we'll entertain some calls. See, let's look at one more. We're waiting on this. This did she many days. This is the, the young damsel that was uh, 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 had a spirit of divination and Paul cast it, cast it out. Notice this. And this she did many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. Now, friends, Marty said, well, there you have the apostle saying in the name of Jesus. I'm not disputing that he said it, but friends, if the phrase in the name of Jesus means that you say it, was it the pronouncing of the name Jesus that compelled the demons to exit? What was it that called, caused them to come out? Was it simply saying the name or was it the authority invested in the person who was speaking for Christ? See? What was it that caused the demons to come out? If you look in Acts chapter 19... You have a group of individuals who spoke the name of Jesus and the demon didn't come out. It wasn't, it wasn't simply the enunciating of the letters J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. It wasn't saying the word that was, that was the power, but yet it was the power of the authority of Christ that was given to the Apostle Paul to do these very things. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of, out of her. Paul was simply evoking the authority that was given him. It wasn't saying the name. He could have said, come out of her and not say it in the name of Jesus, and it would have come out just as readily, just as easily. See, friends, this is what we have to understand. Simply saying this name is not what... It is the power. The power is in the authority, in the person. It's in the, it's in the position that he has been exalted to, not simply the name J-E-S-U-S. If that were the case, friends, then when you go down to down the road and you see your friend Jesus, hey, he's got the same name. Someone who has the same name, spelled J-E-S-U-S, does that mean they have the power? No, friends. The power is in the person who wears this name. And doing something in his name means you're doing it by his authority. Friends, let's talk about baptism in the name of Jesus. Baptism in the name of Jesus. What does it take? What is it all about? What is involved in baptism in the name of Jesus? My friend Marty would say that, well, you have to say in the name of Jesus or it's not valid. It's not valid unless you say those words, friends. Let's see what the Bible says. Ba baptism in the name of Jesus does not require a particular place. It does not require a particular place. It just has to be a place that has much water. The Bible says that John was baptizing in the Jordan because there was much water there. Baptism is a burial. Therefore, it requires water, but it doesn't require a particular place. Here you see, uh, you see a, a, a woman being baptized in the ocean. Much water. Much water. It doesn't require a particular place. Doesn't, you don't have to have a, you know, a certain temperature of the water. doesn't really matter. That may be preferred. You know, maybe preferred. But I've seen... I've seen individuals be baptized in a, in a pool of very, very cold water. I actually baptized a man up in, uh, 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 what's the big lake up in north of Bassett? Fairstone Park. Uh, 
the, the uh, Philpott Lake. And it was in the middle of, it was middle of February, and it was mighty cold. See, friends, it, it doesn't matter what the temperature is. What matters is, what matters is, did you do it by Christ's authority? Baptism is not validated, a scriptural baptism in the name of Jesus. It's not validated by who baptized you, but the doctrine of baptism in the name of Jesus only, where you have to say the word Jesus in order for it to be valid, actually makes your baptism validated by the person who is baptizing you, and it is dependent upon what they say. Now, friends, is that really what, we, what you want? Do you really want your salvation dependent upon what someone says to you while you're under the water? Well, you're in a very, uh, a, a very uh, uh, awkward position or you're in a position where you can't, really, you can't even hear. You don't even know if that's what he said. You just have to have faith. That's what he said. You know what, friends? The only faith I want to have in baptism is the faith that God's going to do his part when I do what he tells me to do. You don't have to have something spoken over you in a certain way, shape, form in order for it to be valid. For baptism to be in the name of Jesus, it is, there is liberty given to the one who is baptizing if they want to say something or not. I ask this, in Acts 8 and verse 36, Acts 8 and verse 36, what did Philip say when he baptized the eunuch? Notice this, Acts 8 and verse 36, we're going to get to this, this call. Acts 8 and verse 36, they went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. How do we know that he said anything? You're on the word from the Lord. Asked you, and I'll hang up. I just want to ask you a question. Uh, exactly when you baptize somebody, what 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 exactly do you say when you baptize somebody? And I'll hang up and somebody else call. All right. Well, I don't <clears throat> I don't say anything exactly. In other words, there's not a particular form of word or formula, as as uh, our friend Marty would say, that I have to say. It may depend upon who is there, who else is present. I'd like to make a call. It may depend yeah. upon. It may depend on who else is present. It it uh, if if there is a large assembly of people there, I may say, may tell them, you know what, we're going to baptize this individual, just like they did in the New Testament. That is, we're going to bury them for the remission of sins, because that is what Christ said to to do. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Mark sixteen sixteen. We're going to bury them, and then we're going to raise them up, and they'll be a new creature in Christ. I may tell them, I'm going to baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. I may tell them, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I may not tell them anything, because, friends, this is why. At the time a person gets to the baptistry, do you think that they have never heard that Jesus is the king? and that he commands them to be baptized. And therefore, it is by his authority that they're doing this. Do you think they've never heard that? See? We asked Marty, could you say to someone at the back of the building, you know, I'm going to baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the mystery of sins. Now, when I get to the baptistry, Marty says, you want, you got to call that name over one more time. as if there is something miraculous or special that's going to happen when you speak that word. Friends, if you could speak the word and remove the sins, then why not speak the word to them when they're out there on the street and not even worry about getting into the baptistry? See? So I don't particularly say anything necessarily. I mean, there's a lot of different things I have said. You're on the word from the Lord. Hello? Hello? You're on the word from the Lord. Well, what, I, really, that man just asked you to. Hello. Uh, you're here. You're you're on air. Okay. He just asked you practically the same thing I was going to ask you. Okay. What did you say when you baptize somebody? What, what do I say? Yeah. I, I don't necessarily have a uh, something from rote memory that I say. I mean, it may depend upon the situation. If there's a large number of people. I may tell them, you know what, God has commanded 
that people be baptized for the remission of sin. So I'm going to baptize them because that's what I have the authority to do. I'm doing it in their in the name of Christ. I don't I don't have to I don't have to say anything if that person knows that what they're doing is what's commanded to them by God. And well, that's not that's not much of a Bible answer. Why not? But wonder what the, uh, John the Baptist said when he baptized Jesus. Do you think he said in the name of John, "I baptize you"? <laughs> what What did John say? The what? What What do you think John said when he baptized Jesus? Well, all of my life I've heard, "I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit." Do you think that's what John baptized Jesus? Well, in a way, I kind of believe he maybe he did. Well, now, John didn't know who Jesus was yep. until after the baptism. Yep. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Here's why. Let me, let me read that verse to you. In John 1, verse 33, mm -hmm. John says, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Now, that was... Was that before or after Christ, Christ's baptism? When did, the, when did the Spirit descend upon Jesus? Probably after he At, went down under the water and back up. All right, after, after he was baptized. Mm -hmm. Now watch, this is what John says. John says, And I knew him not. I didn't know who Jesus was, but he that sent me, that's God, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So John didn't really know who the Messiah was until after he was baptized. Now, John couldn't have baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost because he didn't, he didn't know for sure who the Son was. You see? Well, I didn't say the Holy Ghost, but I believe... Well, I, I said I believe you're supposed to be baptized in the name of the Father... Son and the Holy Spirit. I do too. But I don't believe that that means you have to say that. You see? I, I, would, I would have the same problem with, with that statement as I have with Marty's. Marty says you have to say Jesus, and you're saying, sounds like, you have to say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. And my contention is this, man. My, my, my point is this. Doing something in the name of the Father are doing something in the name of Jesus does not depend upon us saying it. It depends upon us doing it. You see? Jesus said baptize. Now, is, that some, is baptize something you do or something you say? Well, I think you and that other man, that Robinson man, is so much alike, I, I believe you can, and I don't mean no harm about it, but... I do not believe we have to be baptized to be saved like y'all say because I do believe people can get uh, saved on their deathbeds and go to heaven and there's nothing in the Bible that says we cannot. Can, 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 I, ask you, can I ask you a question? I'd like to, I'd like to respond to that. Huh? I, I'd like to t uh, talk to you about someone uh, being saved on their deathbed. Okay. Do, does... Does a person have to uh, do anything in order to be saved? Do they have to? Do they have to confess Jesus? Of course, they got to confess their sins, and I honestly believe that yes. And I and I believe now. I've I've been told that uh, that Jesus don't the Lord don't hear a sinner's prayer. Well, I believe that He does because I believe if you say, Father, forgive me. You know, in the name of Jesus, I believe he will hear our prayers no matter how bad we have been. Okay. And I believe he will save us. Okay, now let me ask you this. What about that person lying on the deathbed who, is, let's say they're paralyzed, they're in a coma, and they can't speak? Now, they of can't... Course. They can't... They, no, now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 if, the, if a person can't confess their sins, as you say, mm -hmm. and they can't confess Jesus as Lord, how are they going to be saved? They can't. That's not that. I said that. They, they can't. Okay, okay. So, but, but, but here's my question. Can. Here's my point, though, ma'am. See, 
you, you don't like us limiting someone's salvation to being baptized because you said if someone's on their deathbed, they can't be baptized. But I'm saying, well, what if they're on their deathbed and they can't confess? See, the, only diff the only difference that we're having here is you want to allow them to be saved if they can confess but not be baptized, but you won't let them be saved if they don't confess. See, I'm saying they can't be saved if they're not baptized. You're saying they can't be saved if they don't confess. But the only difference is you're can't limiting. If they can't be saved, that makes sense. But if they got, I believe if they've got, say, like two or three minutes breath left in their body, and they look up and say, Father, be merciful me a sinner, I believe. But what if they can't talk? Lord will save what if they can't talk? I really do. I said, if they can talk, no. Well, I'm gonna say, man, here's the thing, though. If you want to say, if you want to say they're they'll be saved if they can be, if they can confess, then I'm gonna say they can be saved if they'll be baptized. The only difference is you're drawing a line at confession, and I'm saying let's put it where God put it and be and be saved. Now I want to give you this one verse before we go because we're 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 getting close to time. Yeah. But you want to say you said baptism does not save. You don't believe that. Well, you must not believe Peter's words then, because Peter said, "Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus Christ well, for the remission of sins." Look at it like this: way, way you you talking? When we go up to the front of the front, we're supposed to say, "Baptize me. I want to get saved." I don't believe that. I believe we say, "I want to be saved, then get baptized." Well, I tell you what: you find that in the Bible. Find, get saved, and then be baptized in the Bible. Well, can, you, can you find it? Why would we want to be baptized if we've never been saved? Well, why would you want to confess if you've never been saved? Oh, man, how are you ever going to get saved if you don't confess? Well, how are you ever going to be saved if you're not baptized? You, the only difference, ma'am, is you're saying one thing is has to come before baptism. Oh, no, for some reason or another, you and him just twisted. Ma'am, no. Bible listen, for some you, reason. I don't know why it. it is. Find the scripture. Find the scripture that says, save before baptism. You can't find it. If you want to allow, if you want to say a person... Baptism it, came in after we get ourselves saved, but we do not have to be baptized. All right. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. If we're able for, to be what, baptized. For the remission of sins. Repent and be baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Now, if they are not baptized... Will they have remission of sins? Ma'am? Ma'am, you still there? Hello? I think she might have hung up. Ma'am, you still there? Okay. My, my point was, ma'am, if, if you want to say something is a prerequisite, that is, it comes before baptism or before salvation, then don't get mad if I go to the Bible and show you that something comes before salvation, like baptism. See? The only difference is you just don't want water in it. And that sounds like another caller we had. So, uh, all right. Uh, quickly, you're on a uh, uh, word from the Lord. Ah, uh, yes. I just want to tell you I have prayed for you this whole the whole time you've been on TV tonight. All right. When you say that you that, that name, Jesus, that you don't, you know, you have, you don't have to say it. That is the most precious name in all the world, Jane. I'm not denying that, Jane. I'm not denying that. I know that, and you know what? But my point is you, this: you need Jane, to, my, my you need to this. really call upon the Lord in everything that you do. Yeah, well, y'all can say that stuff Jane. pushes iron your breath, your breath Jane. in your body, but God gives you every breath I, you breathe. I don't deny that, Jane. But here's the thing: see, when someone says that you're not going to be saved unless you verbally say the name of yeah. Jesus. Well, you know what? The Baptists say the very same thing. The Baptists say you're saved. Now, what's the difference in the sinner's prayer saying the name of Jesus and the, and the oneness uh, Pentecostals, the, that oneness doctrine that says Jesus only, saying that you have to say the name of Jesus in baptism? The only difference is one standing in the baptistry and one's not. One's standing down here on the, on, the, on the mourner's bench and one's over here in the baptistry. And both are saying you're saved when you say that name, Jesus. And, and, and Jane, I'm just saying. That's just like a John when he was baptizing in the river Jordan. He 
was looking for the for the son. He did not know Jesus because you are, people's always calling you about the thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. At that time, Jesus had not died. Right. Okay. John was was baptizing in the river Jordan. He did not know Jesus. He was preaching of Jesus because he said, "One mightier than I is coming." Okay. But, but God revealed the Lord to right. him that day. But, but my point, the lady we were calling earlier said, you know, she thought John baptized in the name of, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And my point was, that he didn't because he Jesus was baptized. had not come what, and what did, what did John say? Can you tell me what did John say? By whose Behold authority? Behold the Lamb of God that yeah. takes away the okay. sins of the world. All right. All right. All right. Jane, I'm going to have to go because I'm, I'm running out of time. Thanks for your call. Please uh, call the name right. Jesus out. Okay. All right. Well, friends. Uh, you know, I don't have a problem with saying the name of Jesus. I mean, I don't know why people think that I, 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 I don't despise the name, but I'm saying, friends, just by saying the name, there's no power in simply saying the name unless you're doing what the person who wears that name commands you to do. And that's what we're talking about, friends. That's, that's, the, uh, that's, that's the whole point of, of uh, uh, baptism. Friends, we're going to wrap up. Uh, James Oldfield, this is uh, a word from the Lord, and we hope that you'll uh, reach us, contact us with this, this information. P.O. Box 1983, Reedsville, North Carolina. If you'd like to write to us, a regular mail, here's my cell phone number, here's my email address. Please call us and let us know how we can help you. Till next time, friends, always make sure that you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.